What's happening, Feast and Friends? Welcome to another episode. Tonight, I've got an unboxing, but this isn't stuff I bought. This is all from all of you. Yeah, a while ago, I got a P.O. box. I always link that down below now. I got a P.O. box so I can send lures to folks, do giveaways, and I've got some more giveaways coming soon, so stay tuned. But that's why I got the P.O. box. I've always had folks asking if they could send me lures or send me something kind of as a gift. And I was always really hesitant to do that. You know, I didn't start my channel to become some famous person getting a bunch of stuff from people. I started my channel for fun to share my experiences and try to teach some stuff along the way. But I talked to a couple of my buddies about it and they kind of put it into perspective. They said, Debo, it's just their way of saying thanks. It's a little token. You know, it's no different than when you and I go out and we buy each other lunch. So it's been really cool to see folks like you sending stuff to my channel, lures, some other things. We're going to go through that, but it does mean a lot. I appreciate it from all of you. But that's enough talking. Let's go over there and talk about what's in here. All right, where should we start? Let's start here. These are some jigs from my guy, Mr. Bear. These are 5 16 ounce jigs. They've got a four out mustad hook. I've got one here already. Oven cured powder paint. You can see that's after a day of use and that still does have the black on it. Looks good. Epoxy weed guard on there. I didn't trim it or anything. I just left it at is. And he already had it all nice and trimmed up as a nice little round ball head finesse jig, 5 16 ounce. And this has become my favorite from the bank because it's heavy enough where you can throw it on a medium heavy, still get good distance pitching and flipping, but it's light enough where it's not always getting hung up in the rocks and all that stuff. You can see there I've got a little tiny reaction innovations. That's the Smalley Beaver, a little three and a half inch trailer. Goes perfect on there. That jig has been absolutely money for me this year. Now, Mr. Bear sent these in his letter. He said he enjoyed the show. He appreciates the videos. He sent me a number of these and he said, it's up to you if you want to share with Randizzle or not. Yes, I did share with him. And this is actually the video you're going to be seeing hopefully Saturday. Hopefully I can get that all done and uh, uploaded and everything for you. But we took these out and used actually just this, this setup right here, this jig, a little trailer, and we caught all of our fish that day on those. So it was a bunch of fun. Thank you, Mr. Bear. The jigs are awesome. If I had a bunch of these, man, I would do work. Black and blue, they worked awesome hooks on them are razor sharp look at that hooks dig right into the nail they don't skate across or anything everything held up really nice little jig so thank you sir you do some fine work some little finesse jigs next up a little white box now this was interesting this was from my dude brian left me a note in here that said debo been stockpiling this line for you pure fishing thought i'd gift it to you as a way to say thanks for all your tips and videos so brian thank you very much check this out this is a roll of calyx braid i had honestly never even heard of calyx i didn't know they made braid but that's a thousand meter roll that's enough 65 pound braid that i will need for frogging for a long time but 65 pound calyx braid you see down there on the bottom Pure Fishing, the same ones that are owned by Berkeley. I think uh, Abu Garcia, they're under that flagship. But there it is, some dark green 65-pound braid. It feels like a four-carrier braid. You know, it's kind of rough. It's not a real smooth braid, but uh, a lot of the four-carriers are pretty much like that. So all around good braid. You see, I did put a hole in it because it just so happened the other day I was casting clear down to the backing, the mono backing on my frog and reel. Hadn't re uh, put new line on it this year yet, so I needed to reline that and get it all done. So that's what I put on here. And that's already after a day of fishing it. You can see there I was throwing that little river to see bully wall. And I did end up catching my first frogfish of the year on it. Well, I didn't actually catch it. I hooked it, but well, I'll show you. Oh my gosh. <gasps> did you see that? So yeah, getting to do some testing on that frog. Look at that. You can already see it's got the scratch and teeth mark on the bottom there from a couple fish but testing that braid so i found out once i got it dialed in uh it, it did cast pretty well it's a little rough so it's not a super smooth braid you know like some of the eight or nine carriers um but kind of what you'd expect in a four carrier so put that on there we're going to put that to use on here for a while so brian thank you very much for the the braid that's a bunch and uh, i really appreciate it oh and one other thing pure fishing used to have one of their headquarters i noticed now it says in south carolina but they used to have a headquarters up by lake okaboji here in iowa they have like a discount store and stuff i don't know if they have all that up there in uh, northwest iowa i don't get up that way enough but i know they did have a pure fishing store there with a whole bunch of discount deals i might have to make a trip and check that out all right next up this little box of goodies check out those guys found these and thought about you and your trout fishing videos please give them a try please keep the videos coming he said i appreciate how down to earth you are and he said we need more randizzle well joey thank you very much for sending these talk about some cool looking little cranks now i'm not only thinking trout but throw these on the ultra look at those super cool little dudes i have one it's a i don't know what brand it is like a bright orange one I've tried it a little bit and I know the bluegill loved hammering it. Look at those little things. Very cool little guys. Looks on them seem to be good and sharp, but I'm thinking crappie, bluegill, panfish, panfish, smaller bass, really neat looking little things, little 
different set, almost like a shad looking deal there. That dude sort of looks like a baby bass. Speaking of trout, I think that might be what we have there. A little rainbow trout colored little baby crank. Lastly, that's almost like a little sexy shad. Blue back, some yellow on it, white belly. Pretty cool looking things. And look at that. They're about as big as my finger. Just little tiny itsy bitsy crankbaits. So I'm thinking panfish, trout, crappie, whole bunch of stuff. Throw those in the ultralight. We're going to have to do a day of just those. So Joey, thank you very much for the box. I appreciate you a bunch. Very cool. I'll definitely be putting those to use. Okay, next, my buddy Matt surprised me and said, hey, I got some stuff for you here. Let's talk old school. Check out these. Some old school hula poppers, that old leopard frog pattern. Now, these were kind of a, a lure of patience. Look at that one. Got some cool black spots and stripes on it. But for those of you old enough to remember the, the Arbogast, the old hula poppers. A lot of the folks newer to fishing or just getting into fishing probably have no idea what in the heck this thing is. It's almost like if you take a pop and perch and mix it with a Rebel Pop R, you get something kind of like this. Cool little lure, big, huge mouth on it there. You can see that's bigger than my thumb. And that's for plopping. So it's not like a regular popper where, you know, you can pop it two, three times. A popper, you can even walk. The hula popper is really a game of patience. It's a big broop. And when you pit, pop that, look at how big that mouth is. It does a big, huge bubble, big broop. And just kind of sits there and then you let it sit i remember on the ponds at night after the sun started to go down you'd throw this and bloop you couldn't even really see your lure but bloop and then bam super cool old school lure i have one he gave me a few of these one i already took out because the hooks on them are kind of janky you can see the little hook hangers there are kind of interesting because they stop the the hooks from being pushed forward so i was looking at that i took one bent it around took these uh, screws out turned it around and put some better upgraded hooks on there. I took it out fishing. I didn't catch anything on it. But I might even sand some of these down and do a different painting on some. Try to get kind of fancy with the, the tail, the skirtless stuff here. I don't know. We might try to mess around with it and do some modifications to the, uh, the old hula popper and see what we can do with it. Yow. So there it is. Pretty cool. My guy Matt. Thank you, sir. He's more than just a subscribe fishing friend. He's a dude around here. So also got a couple of packages of some Exxon lures. Now I thought these were interesting because they're going to be something similar to what else I got in here from a subscribe fishing friend. Check these things out. These are like a brush hog on steroids. It says it's only a six inch, but I think once you get those tails all out there, that's more like a seven, maybe even seven and a half inch bait. It's very large. Now the cool thing about brush hogs or this style of bait is uh, when I started fishing them at first, I didn't have a lot of confidence in them. These like these big things here, I don't know. I didn't like the way they looked. I actually just pulled these off and pulled the little arms off. And it was essentially like a twister tail worm with two like appendages on it. That's how I first started fishing the brush hogs because I thought they looked kind of silly. I got some on sale. Then as I got used to them, I just left the stuff on them. And they do definitely catch fish. The baby brush hogs too, a little bit smaller version. But this is X-Zone Lures version of that. Pretty cool little things. Love the color on this one. What do they call this? Black and blue swirl. It's actually the MB Hog Hunter. Very neat lure. I like that. Big size. We'll see how that does. We're going to throw those. Also got this pack. This is called the 4-inch Adrenaline Bug. This is in the Bama Craw color. Very neat. Now, I noticed it says these have floating claws. So this would be something I personally would just Texas rig and throw around but they're pretty neat kind of a, a beaver style bait you can see they've got the little legs back there just like any beaver style bait they don't have a lot of twisting in motion you just undo those and apparently these claws kind of float up so we'll see how these do i like the body it's got kind of a thick body seems to be pretty good and durable almost like a craw jellyfish garlic mixture i don't know what it is got some little legs there on it pretty cool the adrenaline bug we're going to throw those. I do see they uh, just got Brandon Polinek on their team. X-Zone Lures. I've had a few of their things. Trying them out this year. I love the little Ned Rig baits. They're pretty neat. So we're going to try that. See how those do on a Texas rig. What else do we have in here? Let's move this aside. My guy, Mr. Floyd. Now talk about history and cool. He sent me a bunch of stuff that is super neat. Now Mr. Floyd appreciates my lure painting videos. And that was kind of the theme of what he sent me. He said, I really appreciate your videos and the education. In close, you're going to find some lure blanks that I acquired from Lure Jensen. Now before selling out to Rapala, most of the company's lures are made of only a few miles from his house. So he bought a lot of these lures pretty cheap. So he wanted to send some over to me and share them. Some of the blanks, he said, are powder coated in a chrome base like those there. Super neat. And he's got some other stuff in here I'll talk about kind of as I go through. So Lure Jensen, check those out. Those are called the Power Minnows. A couple smaller blanks and then a larger blank in there. Look at that cool kind of design to it, kind of shape. See how it tapers from the top there, flat kind of bottom. 
almost like a precursor to the shad wrap almost. I don't know. I've never really seen this kind of shape, but it's a square bill. So I don't know, you know, if this is going to be more like a jerk bait, if you throw it and, you know, cast it and retrieve it, kind of like a shad wrap. I don't know. Super cool design on it. I appreciate that. And some of these are so cool. I honestly just want to collect them and put them up on a board. I don't even want to paint them. They're so neat. These are collectibles. Now also from Lure Jensen in here, speed traps. Again, kind of that same sort of design, flat belly. You can see a tapered back. And again, it's a square bill. Just a little tiny rattle in it before I dropped in there. Kind of a pointy nose. Very cool little lures. What are these guys? Lure Jensen Sugar Shad Lipless. And I said these are vintage. These are made by Edmore Lures in Florida. Lure Jensen bought the company and produced the baits until that company sold. And what was the second thing here? Hot Lips Express Deep Diver. Look at that. Hot Lips Express. Have you ever seen a lip like that on a crankbait? Talk about gnarly and wild. Neat little design. That's like, a, I don't even know what you'd call that. Very cool little vintage lure. And the Sugar Shad. This looks pretty similar to some lipless that we see today. Got a good rattle in it. Very cool little lures. Check out these little gems. Lure Jensen Hot Shots. Now there's one big hot shot and then some small ones in there. So that one's got like a powder coated red on it. See it says there Hot Shot from Lure Jensen. Very neat, weird design, almost like a flatfish. We called them a lazy Ike when I was younger. Kind of that sort of shape to it, but rounded. Then also the little baby version of that. It's got some holographic kind of tape stuff in the inside there. No rattle on these little guys. I don't know how deep these dive. I mean, they have a decent little bill on them. Back is just kind of flat. Very weird, unique, interesting looking little deals there. Almost looks like a cicada from the front. Got a few of those. I might paint up one of those little dudes, do a video on that, see how those little guys do. Okay, next up, the pre Rapala Magnum Wiggle Warts. Now, these are vintage. You said these are considered to be kind of rare among some collectors. Now, I noticed, you know, looking at it, there's no sort of marking on it. Pre Rapala, I don't know if Lure Jensen made these. I really don't know a lot of the history on the blank stuff, but, you know, just kind of some Magnum sized warts, but very plain. You know, nothing has been done to them. These are literally just blanks, but those are big wiggle warts. Look at those. Those are. Definitely Magnum, big size guys. Oh yeah, here's a blank over here, like one of the blanks that I would paint for the wiggle wart, so you can see the difference in size, much larger. Those dudes are very neat, might have to paint those up. What else do we have in here? A couple of the smaller sugar shads, again, Lure Jensen, pretty cool. Some more of those little tiny hot shots, definitely gonna have to paint up one of those for a vid. Again, a couple of those little bit larger hot shots, a clear one with some kind of foil inside of it. And then a red one there. You can see Lure Jensen, pre Rapala. Oh, speaking of the flatfish, there we go. I forgot to put these in here. Lure Jensen quick fish. So when I was younger, I never called them a flatfish. I think maybe it was where you grew up, but we called them a lazy Ike and fish these. Look at those things. Talk about weird. A spoon mixed with a crankbait mixed with, I don't know what you call it, but very cool little things. If you've never fished one, they're pretty neat. Check that thing out. Almost looks like a daggum boomerang. Shoehorn. I don't know. Super neat. Might need to do something to one of those. Get that out, test it, see if we can catch anything on it. Cool little design. And last but not least, Lure Jensen Speed Trap Square Bill. So you can see it's kind of got that holographic foil inside there. The square bill that we all know and like now. This one's a little bit different, almost opposite. A little bit bigger on the belly and tapers up to kind of that rounded humped back that, that we all know now. So very cool little things very very interesting old lures i love seeing old stuff like this vintage lures very cool and especially old blanks you know pre rapala stuff lure jensen very very neat so mr floyd thank you so very much for all these blanks comment below everybody out there comment below and let me know which one of these would you like to see painted up and like to see me try to catch some fish on it i'll try to make that happen i figure why not since we're talking about blanks some stuff that i picked up the other day check out this dude Big old wake bait looking thing. I might have to do a painting video on that guy pretty soon. Pretty neat. Got one done up to check out and test. I tell you what, they're pretty sweet. I think the pike might hammer this. Or maybe a little whopper plopper. Picked up some of these a while ago. Haven't been uh, painting the, the past month or so. So might have to do one of those. All right, now the rest of the stuff in the box, you're not going to believe it. My, my guy, Chris Felix, sent me a whole box of soft plastics. So he's just getting into soft plastic bait making. He's kind of addicted to it. And I can see how that would be. I've had the chance to do some soft plastic making with Mr. Nate Marling, Nick Rundle, Nate, those three guys over there, super cool in the bait cave. They kind of took me under their wings and let me uh, do some soft plastic making and I can see how it would be super duper addictive. Check out that, he's got some purple clawed craws, some black craws with some green pumpkin and flake. 
Some old trusty Sankos, green pumpkin with a little chartreuse, just the tip. As we were talking about those brush hogs earlier, check out that. He's got kind of a brush hog pour there. Notice the flappers on these are a little bit bigger. Has the two curly tails there. Again, I mean, if you've, if you've got a big profile of these, you can find some of these cheap. Don't be afraid to rip these off. It's essentially just like a ribbon tail worm, but with two ribbon tails. Did some two-tone pours here on some big worms. Gosh, how big are those worms? Like what, nine, nine and a half inch? That's pretty close, nine and a half inch worms. Like a black and blue kind of midnight flake on top. Flip it over on bottom, and again, you got that kind of spray grass or green pumpkin with different flake color in it. Super neat. Those two tones are always neat where they got the top that's one color and the bottom that's different. I love those. Some big worms like that are going to be killer coming here soon. Summer's coming around. I love throwing a big worm during the summer. Some more Sankos in that color, black and blue top, and kind of that green pumpkin on the bottom. Two-tone, pretty neat. And this is pretty cool. This is like black with red and purple flake inside of it. Now that trailer is probably not going to do a lot, but on those beaver style baits, you know, when you're throwing a jig, especially in colder water, you don't want the trailer to do anything. So that would be a good cold water trailer. Throw that baby on a jig. Mr. Felix, you outdid yourself. You did not need to send this much stuff. Super cool looking at all these color combinations and stuff that you came up with. That's why soft plastic making gets so addicting. You've got so many different options. Check out that one there. Dark top, then you flip it over, kind of a purple with some flake in it. Neat. I like that. Black and purple is honestly my favorite. I like it a little bit better than black and blue, I think. Black and purple is pretty underrated. That's kind of a black purple with a whole bunch of different color flakes in it. Pretty neat color there. Another sweet two-tone color. Look at that one. Black with some light purple. Red and black flake belly. That one's really neat. And more of your clear water color. Almost like a watermelon red pumpkin, but also with green flake in there. It's like Watermelon Christmas. Those brush hogs, that's in that same black and purple with the red belly. Love that. Again, same for that black and purple color. That's again in that brush hog. Oh yeah, dirty water around here. I bet that color is going to hammer a few fish. Gosh, keep digging around in here. I feel like it's an infomercial on QVC. But wait, there's more. Order in the next 20 minutes and we'll throw on some craws and brush hogs. Again, that black and purple and that little craw style. Oh, here we go. I think these are like the baby brush hogs that I was telling you about earlier. Yeah. Little baby brush hogs. These things are killer. Small ponds. Man, I tell you what. Small ponds, little baby brush hogs like this will get hammered. What else? Some more big worms. Look at those. Those look like a juicy meal for some big bass just sitting around waiting. Black and purple. Some more Sankos. Kind of that black with the different colored flake. That's almost like a bluegill color. Green pumpkin. Let's take one out. Green pumpkin with some copper, blue, red. Just kind of an assorted different color inside there. And that's a dark green pumpkin. Almost a dark blackish green again with that chartreuse just the tip same color that we just looked at for that Senko, kind of that bluegillish back dark green with chartreuse claws oh how crazy is this mold this almost looks like the reaction innovations kinky beaver look at that it's got the big wedge style pinchers up there it's got the little antenna again in that dark red with the flake in it pretty neat some more sankos in the black and purple neat color some more big worms in that red and black. Oh, no, these are different. Bolix has something that looks kind of like this. The little legs with the, the round bead type deal on them. Once you get those all apart again, looking kind of like that beaver style bait, but they got the little hangy arm things. That's kind of a neat profile. I like the little arms like that, that especially in the water, I bet they do their own little ding, 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 ding. Another one of those in kind of that black with some different flakes in it. Good dirty water color. And then finally this. That happens to be the same style as my one of my favorite chatter baits. Looks almost like the Yamamoto Zacco, huh? Almost in a motor oil flake color there. Pretty neat looking, but that would go good on a black chatterbait. Let's see, is that it? That is it. That's all for the box, and I say that's all like I didn't get anything, but holy smokes, thank you everybody so much. Mr. Felix, you did not need to send all these soft plastics. Very cool. Definitely be putting them to use. Maybe Randizzle and I can do a random challenge and grab a bag and so you can catch more. But enough yapping here. Let's go close it out. All right, future friends, that does it for me for tonight. Comment below and let me know what you want to see. Do you want to see a subscriber lure only fishing challenge? Is there a certain lure that you want to see? Whatever it is, comment below and let me know. I love hearing from all of you. But tonight's subscribe fishing friend, good shout out goes to everybody who sent me stuff. Mr. Bear, Mr. Floyd, Brian, Joey, and Chris Felix. Thank you all very much for sending stuff into the channel. I greatly appreciate it. It'll definitely be put to use. And like I said, some of it has already been put to use. So that video will be coming soon. But that's it for me tonight. It's late. I still have to edit. So thank you all so very much for watching. And until next time.